All right, in this uh, Stormworks Basics, we're going to continue going uh, back to our helicopter tutorial, and we're going to turn this into a coaxial rotor. So we'll try to make this a little on the quick side here. I don't have a ton of time. So uh, coaxial rotor, co is in two, axial is in rotational. So uh, we're going to put two rotors on there. Um, normally in a helicopter, because the rotor is turning one way, the body of the craft is going to, because of torque, is going to move in the opposite direction, hence why you need a tail rotor. If you have... Um, a secondary main ro main rotor that turns in opposition to the first one, that's going to cancel out that torquing moment, and you're not going to need a tail rotor. So you'll see this a lot in Stormworks, uh, people putting on, um, having coaxials, so you don't have to deal with that. So if we look at the uh, first rotor, we have a forward arrow, we have a forward arrow, and we have a right arrow. So what we can do is we can take a block, we can control click, and if we press the U, you'll notice now that we have a... Um, forward arrow, forward arrow, and this one's going left. So this way, these are going to turn in opposition to one another. The next thing we're going to do is let's look at the bottom one. It's a two blade neutral and a zero blade length. So that's what we're going to do on this one. Two blades, neutral, zero blade length. Okay, so now they're matched. So we can go ahead and we'll delete this tail rotor out and we'll get rid of that. So let's just get rid of this pipe for right now. We'll, uh, we'll add a pusher at some point. Okay, so now we still have pitch we still have, so pitch can be connected directly from the pitch. So let's just find it here, pitch right there. Let's connect pitch to the pitch. Uh, collective, for right now, we'll just co collect it to collective. Now, if we wanted to add roll, we would uh, have to invert the number, so we're not going to bother. This lower rotor should give us plenty of roll uh, for our craft. All right, so now... Um, we're going to make this yaw with collective. So um, essentially one blade is going to go, uh, is going to, you know, uh, turn us, uh, is going to help us turn one direction and the other. So that's how we're going to do yaw. So let's go ahead and go back into our microcontroller. We're going to edit microcontroller here. And we're probably going to have to add some space here. So we're going to go, um, there's one we can delete. We can delete radiator. We're not doing electric radiator. So we only have three. Oh, I shouldn't have moved that. Let me, uh, if I move something, I might have to reconnect it. So that's why I didn't want to move it. Let's go here. Let's get rid of the radiator. Um, so now we have three. So we need to bring in stabilized yaw. We need to bring in uh, stabilized collective. And then we need to have two out. So we're going to need another spot. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to update this, and I'm going to move it. Uh, we're going to have to increase the size of our microcontroller. So let's move that forward. All right, so let's increase the size of our microcontroller. We'll do properties. We'll make it one longer. All right, so now let's add some logic here. So we want um, this one's going to be a number input, stabilized yaw, stab yaw. All right, so what this allows us to do is we're taking yaw in from the gyro, and so whether or not we have the gyro on or off, it's going to allow us to choose if we want um, that you know, uh, on or off. Plus, it's going to auto-stabilize it, so it's going to smooth it out so that um, it does less jumping. So that was stabilized yaw. This is going to be stabilized collective. We do stab collective. Okay, um, next we want to do... We will do a number output that's going to be a lower collective. And then the next one is going to be another uh, number out, which is going to be um, upper collective. Okay, so that's that. So let's go in here. Let's start working on this microcontroller. So let's grab our whole stack here and move it down. Okay, so we have upper collective. We have lower collective. We have stabilize um, collective and yaw. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want our collectives to both do yaw and to do um, to either have our aircraft go up or down. So we're going to use pluses here. <clears throat> Alright, there we are. So we have that. So um, I believe the upper one needs to be inverted for yaw. So what we're going to do is do a function. Alright, because they're moving in opposite directions. So that's going to be negative x. All right, so let's go yaw, negative x, hook it there. This one's going to be positive x, goes there, uh, and then collective can go there. So we're adding these motions. Now, we don't need uh, we don't need to be able to use 
of our yaw, right? Yaw is going to be a tiny bit of motion. So what I'm actually doing is put some clamps in there too. And we can change the clamps based on um, where we want to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually move that like this. Let's put it here. All right, so let's do negative 0.1. So that's going to be 10% of our motion is going to be able to be used for yaw. So it's 0.1. Um, we don't need all of it for, um, you know, yaw. All right, so upper collective is going to be the negative one. If if it doesn't work or if I'm turning the wrong direction, I just have to flip that down to the lower collective. All right, so let's quickly check this, see if it works. So let's go, um, let's move this back. We're going to have to reballast because I'm going to end up deleting some of my um, weight blocks. All right. Let's merge that back. Let's look at our, um, if you look, our, our center of gravity is a little bit far forward. That's fine. Um, we can add a weight block so, because, remember, we were we uh, deleted the tail rotor. So let's go ahead and let's, just for now, um, okay, so that does a good job. It lowers it and moves it back some. Okay, so now let's start hooking this up. All right, so we have um, stabilized yaw. All right. Um, do I have yaw connected? I do to the seat. Okay, we have stabilized yaw, so let's find that. Stabilized yaw. Um, stabilized up down is our collective right there. Um, next, we want upper collective. So that's going to go here to collective. And then uh, we have our lower collective is right here. All right, so let's give this a run. Um, we're going to start it with the um, gyro off. Again, like I said, if you can make your vehicle stable when um, when the gyro is off, it's going to make it much easier for the gyro. Um, you know, if your craft is inherently stable and you can hand fly it well, the gyro is going to have a very easy job of doing its work. So I'm actually, I have a bunch of trim in here. I'm going to take that out. That was left from the last build, so, okay. So let's see, we are have some instability there as we can notice so let's check and see what's up with that okay let me make sure I connected everything correctly this is the first thing all right so that is collective goes to lower collective collective goes to upper collective stabilize collective um, stabilize up down stabilize yaw goes to yaw yaw goes there Okay, that should be good. Um, let's see what's up. Maybe I put the function on the wrong side, so let's try this really quick. Let's flip these, see if that fixes our problem. Let me look at it really quick, too. So we have stabilize yaw, negative 0.1 to 0.1. Function negative, positive, add that to stabilize collective. Okay, let's update that. All right, so I just flipped those. Let's see if that fixes it. If it doesn't, we have to do some more work. Make sure my trims, yeah, I'm starting with trim just because, again, the old build that we did yesterday, that I did yesterday. Okay. All right, so we have a little bit of a wobble there. Let's see if we can... Okay, so see, we can yaw right, we can yaw left. So we had it connected to the wrong side, and so that was causing the gyro to try to get us to um, you know, go the wrong direction. So let's put on our gyro. This is me hand flying it. So we have some instability we have to work on here. Okay, and let's see. A big part of this might be um, we added extra, you know, we had an extra rotor, so we're going to have to tune that in. So let's try running at a lower RPS and see if that fixes it. Okay. So let's have this, uh, let's keep it at 10. I'm not going to throttle up this time. And let's start with the gyro on. Let's see what the gyro does for us. Okay, let's see. I still have all that trim in, which I need to set that so that it doesn't start with trim. Once I save it once, it will uh, keep it. All right, so we have a little bit of yaw instability there. All right, so that's probably, again, as you see, we have less instability than we had last time. Um, 
And that's because we're running at a lower RPS. So let's... Okay, so there's me yawing to the left. I'm going to yaw to the right. Okay. Let's add some collective. Let's do collective and yaw. See if it goes crazy. It doesn't. Okay. So let's go forwards. Alright, so we're working. I don't like that little bit of wobble. Um, so what we'll do is we will... Um, might decrease the sensitivity on that. Let's see what our RPS is. RPS is at six, so that's pretty low. All right, so we want to get that. Try to get that wobble out of there. All right, so now let's do this. Let's. Um, we. I think I often have to do this. I haven't built a, you know, a coax in a while. The yaw sensitivity on the gyro is probably way up, so let's go down to like 20%. Let's see if that goes away when I do that. You know, essentially, that's kind of like a PID, you know. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's much better if you build your own gyros, but it's a lot of work, and so this is, you know, I still use these pre-made gyros a lot because it makes it pretty easy to get going. Uh, let's turn on the um, gyro because I want to see what it's doing, because uh, we're going to see if me changing that number fixes it. I need to take out these trims. Okay. So we're already not wobbling, as you can see. So it looks like that fixed our wobble. All right. So the gyro was overcorrecting. So essentially that slider, I'm, I'm thinking it probably uh, works the p-value. And so we were decreasing our P because it was overshooting. That's my hypothesis. I don't know exactly how they have the gyro working, but I assume it's just a pre-made PID. All right, so now as you notice, we're nice and smooth. All right, so no more of that uh, wiggle wiggle that we were having before, all right? So now, as you can see, uh, I'm yawing right. I can pitch. Now remember, we didn't connect roll to the top rotor. Let's check our roll, see if our roll is enough for us. So it is a little slow. We could probably use more roll control. Um, so let's actually work on that as well. But as you can see, we're nice and stable now. So all it took was us moving that slider from the gyro from 100% uh, down to 20%. We could probably do more. We could do less. Let's uh, one test before we go in. So remember, I left this down at um, a throttle setting of 10, and we're at 6 RPS. The reason that's lower is just because I'm telling it what I want, but... Um, you know, with all the resistance of having the two blades, it's going to give me a different number. All right, so here I am. I'm up at, uh, you know, I set it to 15. It's at 11. We're getting some instability here because of, um, you know, we've increased the RPS. So as you can see, and it seems like it's all pitch instability. Okay, so let's uh, recall that. Let's go to our gyro and let's try... See if I can reduce my pitch. Let's go down to, we'll do 20% on that. It looks like the gyro is trying to uh, over control us there. So let's go six. Let's go all the way up to the top here. Let's let the speed up here. Again, I, I it, it keeps my trim settings from our last craft. I need to go in there and change those. Okay, so let's see if this has more stability now. So we don't want it doing that herky-jerky pitching moment. Remember, we reduced it down to 20%. And it looks like... I don't think I have the gyro on. No, the gyro's not on. So there's the gyro on. Let's see if it, it does any herky-jerky pitch moment like it was doing before. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be doing that. So by reducing that um, that setting on the gyro, again, my assumption is that that's reducing the p-value on a internal PID. And as you can see, um, so so remember, we were talking about the p-value. That's either overshooting or undershooting our target, right? So uh, altitude altitude hold is a good example, right? Say you put in 500, right? If your p-value is too high, it might have you shoot up to a thousand feet, then down to negative a thousand feet, and you crash into the ground trying to reach 500, right? So as you decrease your p-value, well, now it might go up to 600 feet or down to 400 feet, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, and then it gets to 5. You decrease the p some more, it goes, um, you know, 510 feet, 490, 510, 490. So that's, you know, essentially what that's doing. All right, so now we're nice and stable. All right, so let me take the gyro off. Remember I said 
If we can shut the gyro off and hand fly this well, that tells us that our aircraft is nice and stable and it makes the gyro have to do less work. And you see this with a lot of people's problems with uh, helicopters or other craft is if it's unstable, if it doesn't have inherent stability, the gyro is, you're asking a ton of work out of that gyro. You're asking that gyro to do so much work, it just might not be able to do it. So right now I'm hand flying it. Um, as you can see, it's very stable. So the gyro has to do very little work and that gives it less chance to screw up, right? Um, so let's put the gyro back on. Okay, so we're nice and very stable. All right, so let's go back in and I'll just show you again how I fix that instability. So if you're having instability in your build, you may want to try playing with this. So as you see, we had a yaw instability and we had a pitch instability. I reduced these back both down from 100% to 20%. So let's do uh, another thing here really quick. So if so, remember we tested our roll and our roll was a little slow, right? We have two rotors. We're only controlling our roll with the lower rotor. Let's go ahead and let's control, um, let's put a, we have to invert the roll on our upper rotor um, in order so that we keep, so that we roll in the correct direction. So what we're going to do is we have space on our um, microcontroller now because we made it much bigger. So let's add in, um, we'll add in a number input that's stab roll. And let's add another one. This is going to be a number output, which is upper roll. And this is going to be a very simple. Um, this is going to be a very simple fix here. All right. All we have to do is. Um, all we have to do here is we're going to add a function block, a negative x, so that we're putting uh, opposing um, roll to that upper um, that upper uh, that upper uh, rotor. All right. So let's update it. All right. So now we need to find our, um, where is it, right there, stabilized roll. We're going to take that from our gyro stabilized roll. Um, we're going to find the node for um, upper roll. We're going to connect it. Now let's see if um, if we get more roll, um, if we get more roll control now because now both rotors are working to roll us. Also, you hear that annoying, it keeps trying to start, and stall, and start, and stall, and start, and stall, and that's just because it's putting the clutch in too fast. Uh, it wasn't doing that on our previous helicopter because we only have one rotor, so it didn't have to do as much work, so it was putting less load on it. And again, I need to take out these trims. Um, once I save it with zero trims, it will be saved. But um, Alright, so now we have no, I did not put the um, gyro on yet, so we, again, we want to make sure this flies well. So as you can see, we have a lot more roll control. I can roll more quickly. We have a little bit of wiggle going on when I roll. So most likely, we just need to turn down the um, gyro, and uh, that, will, that will fix that instability. So there's our instability. That's probably because of roll. Alright, it's because we fixed the other ones. Let me click four. And as you can see, we get some instability as I turn on the gyro, but it fixes itself. So it's actually not too bad, right? We didn't crash or anything like we did before. So let's go back in. Let's add to the workbench. Let's turn the roll down. 20% um, has been working for us, so let's test it. Right Now, you saw that was a lot less of an instability. So we might be able to do more than 20%, but I'm going to start there. And if it, um, you know, if it's, uh, if it's still good, we can increase it, so... I'm just going to set this. I want it up to uh, 15. Alright. And if I have time, I'll, I'll do something else too. Alright, so we're going to try it without the gyro again. Uh, let me get out these um, trims. I don't need the trims. Okay, so let's, let's put it through its paces here. Okay, let's, um, let's start rolling. Alright, as you see, I'm not getting that wobble that I was getting before. So that's working. We're still able to control really well. Let's snap it on to four and no wobble. So the gyro was just trying to, um, essentially the p-value in the gyro was too high. It was trying to do too much. That was why we were getting the wobbles. So very stable now. So let's uh, go back in. Alright, now remember I wanted to get rid of that stalling noise. So let's go back into our microcontroller. Again, we're adding a lot more load because we're uh, trying to move these rotors. 
Uh, we're trying to move two rotors now, so it's putting more load in the engine. It's causing it to stall. So let me just quickly grab some property text so you can read these. That's um, roll inversion. Or let's just do upper upper rotor roll. Okay, so this is just putting this on here so you guys can see if you want to read and figure out why I put something where I did. And this is going to be our coaxial coaxial collective. Okay, so I'm just labeling those. All right, so remember we had that stalling. It's mostly just an annoying noise that we hear when we start, so it's not the end of the world. But let's go to clutch. So what's happening is we're putting our clutch in too fast. And so if we, let's say we turn that number in half, especially because we only use that clutch when we start, so I have that number. So it was uh, 0 0.005, now it's 0 0.0025. It should put that clutch in more slowly and hopefully not stall. So let's just do a start. The whole point of this start is does it make that uh, stalling and starter noise. And no, it does not. It put the clutch in nice and slow, didn't stall the engine. We don't get that annoying noise. Okay, perfect. So let's do one last thing here. All right, so we've been controlling this like a helicopter. So let me actually um, grab it back. Let's put in a linear speed. Okay, we'll do meters per second now. I usually like knots, but I don't want to, uh, I'm not going to take the time or add microcontrollers to, um, to convert it. Okay, so let's just go directly from the linear speed to the um, dial. Let's spawn it. Let's try to get our max forward speed, and let's test that out really quick. We'll go start it up. We'll go to 15. Okay, we actually got a stall on that one. I wonder if it's because I'm changing the um, the uh, RPS. We're going to press 4 to start our... Um, start up our uh, gyro. Okay, we're up in the air. Let's try to get a max speed reading here. So I'm going to just head out of the hangar. I'm going to um, start to trim the collective up. I'm going to trim my pitch. So I want max collective and I'm going to do enough pitch to just go forwards. And so I'm just doing this so that it kind of sets it for me. Alright, so this is probably here my maximum um, you know, we're about 45 degrees angle. That's going to show me my max speed. So we're about, doing about 22 meters per second. We'll double that. So let's say it's about 40 knots. All right, so not terrible, but not great. And as you can see, one thing that's an issue is see how we're tilted at 45 degrees. Well, now I, I have to look way down to read my gauges. Then I have to look way up to look forwards. So let's go ahead and let's put a pusher prop on here as the final thing we do. All right, so now that's a functioning... Uh, helicopter. Let's save it really quick. Okay. So that's saved. So now let's let's add a pusher prop. All right. So let's take off where the tail rotor was. Um, let's add a clutch. <clears throat> she do not want to add a clutch. I don't want to add a clutch. Let's add a prop. Let's just do a um, aircraft prop, aircraft propeller, um, and we're gonna make sure it doesn't interact with the blades. So we're gonna have to keep putting it back until it does not interact with the blades. Still blade interaction there. We could also, I don't wanna move it down too much because I don't wanna hit it on the ground. Okay. We could also raise the, um, make the, Helicopter itself taller if we wanted to. I'm just trying to do this quickly. Okay, so now we're out of the rotor blade reach. I'm going to shrink this anyways. So we want two blades. We want it neutral. All right, good. So that's there. Um, can I get a... I'm trying to see. This is a little on the big side for me, but um, I don't want to screw with it too much just because it's going to add a lot more um, time on there. Let's just do this. Let's delete this here. Let's put a um, enclosed, and then I'm going to go, I'm just going to put a safety um, bar here so that we don't end up um, hitting this on the ground, so we don't hit our prop on the ground, kind of like how we had on the last one. 
Okay, so that's going to protect us from hitting it. All right, so now uh, we're going to add a throttle. All right, so we're going to add a throttle. Let's put it on the right side just because we have space. Uh, can we go? Yeah, that's good. Let's go from the throttle to the pitch on the uh, propeller. I actually want to reverse this. Um, the prop's facing backwards, so I'm going to have my throttle face backwards. Okay, so one is going to be reduce. Uh, let's set this to negative one, one. Okay, let's go um, logic. Um, let's do the one key. We'll uh, reduce the uh, throttle. The two key will um, increase the throttle. That way we don't actually have to look at it to press it. All right, so let's try this, um, and let's see what we can get for speed on this. Now remember, we're adding more load. We also have to we have to turn the upper rotor, the lower rotor, and this. So we might have to change gear ratios. We might have to um, we might end up with that stalling noise again. Okay, so now we're spinning. So pretty close to the ground there. Um, all right, so let's let the speed uh, speed up. I want to get rid of that trim that I had in there. Um, Let's go ahead and let's put the this on max. Now, the RPS is going to be lower again because we're turning another propeller. The more things we try to turn, uh, the more effort the engine's going to have to sustain. All right, so we can set that up to max. Remember, we had like uh, 22 uh, meters per second last time. I'm going to go ahead and put the gyro on, um, try to do the test similarly. Okay, so now let's go forwards. I didn't check the center of gravity. That's something I should have checked. Um, I added a lot of weight to the back, so we might be tail heavy. Um, all right, so now, remember we were having to look way up to see the horizon? Now we can stay flat. So if I start adding... Okay, what's up? Is that not pitching? That's not pitching. That's also not... One and two are also not doing that. So let's see why that's not working. I think somebody said there was a bug with the throttles not doing that correctly. Let's make sure that this should be, the throttle should be connected to collective. Okay, let's see why that's not working for me here. Okay, I should be able to visually see this. Okay, that's not working. I do not know why. Okay, what is up with that? Hmm. That is interesting. That should be working. All right, let's let's fix the uh, weight issue here. I gotta do this quickly. All right, center of gravity is too far aft, so let's delete those blocks. That pushes it forward. Let's see what's up with this. Why is that collective? Why is that throttle not moving? My collective of my aircraft propeller. Let me try. I'm gonna just throw a different. Um, okay. Let me see if I can get a smaller rotor. I don't think I can. Rotor and light. I could shrink this one, so let's do that. Two blades, neutral, let's shrink it. Let's go. I don't think this really matters. And we'll just go to collective, throttle. I don't know why this isn't working at the moment. Um, it could be electricity. Um, I, I think I have infinite electricity on, but um, let's see what's up with that. Okay, so I should be able to see this move if I move it with the throttle, but, um, okay, I don't know what's up with that. Hmm, that is weird. All right, let me uh, try something else. Maybe, I don't know what's up with that logic. It's connected, okay. Okay, it's not merged. I flipped it and I didn't merge it. Okay, that was all it was, was I didn't merge it. Okay, so I forgot to merge it. Um, now we're good. All right, so this should uh, articulate. Again, I still make these mistakes. All right, as you can see, there it goes. It's it's uh, rotating. Let's put it, try to get it at zero here so when we start up, we don't start moving. Okay, let's, I'm going to recall this really quick. Let's check the center of gravity. Center of gravity is nice and close. Let's do a weight block. Again, let's get this perfect. And I got to go, so we'll, uh, okay, good. So that's nice. 
That's good. Let's change the sensitivity just so this is a little slower. So let's go 50% sensitivity. Let's do our test. So we had 22 meters per second just using the rotors. Now remember, we can leave these rotors up. That's going to give 100% of our lift vector going forwards. And now this prop is going to allow us to push forward. Let's see if we can get faster. So let's go um, 6 to start, 4 for the gyro. Let's increase our desired RPS all the way up to 15, which is our max. Let's take the trims out. And let's go up to, um, okay. And now we should be taking off. Let's just fly in third for a second here. All right, so now we're connected. So all I, f I forgot to merge that throttle. I forgot I spun it around. Okay, so now we're, uh, let's get up in the air and let's start, instead of controlling with the, um, up. Oh, I know why that happened. Okay. So I tried controlling it with the one key, and um, I tried controlling it with the one key, and one is set to um, toggle. Okay. There we go. So those should be pushed, so I can tap on those to get more thrust. Sorry, it's taking a little while. I need to go to work, too. So, oh, And that's working now, so that's good. Still way too sensitive, like 10% sensitivity is what I need. So it, it, it freaked out because it was super sensitive. It's still super sensitive, but we're going to try to tap it and see if we can't slowly push forwards. All right, so I can't remember if the gyro's on or not, so let's look at it. Gyro's on, okay. All right, so I need to take out these trims. Those are still left over from the last helicopter we built. Let's fly out. All right, so we're gonna do this pusher prop and then we will be done. All right, so let's go forward. Let me just gently tap this. All right, so I'm just gently adding collective um, and that's changing the pitch on that pusher prop. Now remember, um, the craft itself wants to rotate opposite to the prop, so that's probably what's causing that instability. So let me do this. Sorry, this is taking forever. Um, so the prop is moving right. That makes the craft wants to move left, so we can fix that by doing this. Let's cut it. Let's move it out one, paste, do rotor. And we did rotor and light. Let's do... Um, rotor light and now we want to put it here we want to hit U so it's reversed okay let's merge this there let's select this we want to do two blades we want neutral we want it as small as we can get it let's uh, then collect connect the collective here to there and the final thing we want to do is let's really push this sensitivity way down all right, so now we're 10%. Spawn it. Let's. This is going to be your final test, and then if I need to, unfortunately, I'll have to do a different video. Okay, so we have uh, engine started. Press 4 for the gyro. Let's increase our thrust to 15. All right, so now let's go in here. Let me take out my trims. Okay. We're up in the air. Let's get going here. So now we have counter-rotating pusher props. This is going to give us uh, less of a rolling moment. The torque of the rotors, we're trying to cause the... Uh, to torque our craft um, opposite to the prop. So now with counter-rotating props, we're gonna, we shouldn't have that problem. So let's start adding some, um, some uh, pitch to our pusher props there. And we're starting to gently increase our speed. Hopefully this has some more stability. If we get that wiggle problem again, we can play with the, um, you know, we can play with the gyro like we're, we were doing before. All right, so now we're up to, as you can see, our max speed before was 22 meters per second. We're gonna probably end up with double speed, right? So we're going double the speed, so what's that? That's like, that's around 80 knots. All right, so we're going 80 knots now, and we are, um, you know, we're going 80 knots in this, and we can also look straight ahead. So it's a little unstable. You know, I could fix that with, um, you know, fixing the gyro, but um, 
as you can see that's that's a pusher prop so I like putting pushers on these just because as you can see I can look straight ahead I don't have to crane my neck I can look at my gauges and it adds a lot of speed so let's recall that um, we'll tune this up later and we'll get that tuned in I'm just not gonna have the time right now but so that's a coaxial helicopter um, and we added the pusher prop at the end there um, so uh, that will finish it up for this video thank you for watching